Hi, my name is Saint Dave, and today, to celebrate my passing of 800 subscribers on YouTube, we're going to look at my entire ThinkPad collection. So, before we dive into the actual collection, which is seven plus two, because my partner and my son both have ThinkPads, well, how could they not, being part of my family? Um, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone that's subscribed thus far. Um, this channel is kind of a hobby project for me. It's, I don't, I don't, it, I'm not aiming to be some sort of massive tech YouTuber. It's just something I do to sort of express interest and to demonstrate and hobbyize and tinker and play and have fun with these devices. And I'm kind of obsessed with them. Uh, what else do I want to say? Yeah, just basically thank you. I, I'm genuinely surprised that I got over 800 subs. I am aiming for 1,000 by the end of the year, but who knows if that'll happen. Um, we seem to have an influx coming in over my recent post, which is good. I wanted to apologise for the constant delays as well in my upload schedule. I am basically mentally disabled. I have schizophrenia. Um, you wouldn't believe the amount of like edits and cuts required to get consist consistent, coherent, takes and footage and especially when I'm doing these really long form hour long videos it's I appreciate your patience is what I'm saying and, and um, so what about 838 subs at the moment and counting so please if you're watching this like subscribe share so on and so forth um, and yeah the other, the other sort of thing worth mentioning before we move into my collection is um, of all the stuff I do, if you're watching this, please leave something in the comments about what, what is it that, that actually interests you about my channel? So I'm trying to sort of figure out how to, how to progress further um, and what sort of content might be most suitable. So, um, for, well, yeah, for example, so I've got a few plans moving forward. So I did my one week with the X230, one week with the X2, X430, T430 and X230 and then I'm kind of going to go back generationally see how far I can go back in time with these week-long video projects uh, with you know an overall history of devices and kind of see so for example I've got an X200 that I've been planning to do that video on I've also got the X220 I recently bought and we will show you all of them in the next section of the video but I've got the X201 here which I've got running Windows 11 which is like kind of mind-blowing but cool. um so i intend to go back generation and then possibly further beyond the x200 and see you know how if is it possible to use these devices further and further back in history of the Novo's product line before they're no longer viable for modern use cases stuff like that um further notes i'm probably I've looked into and possibly going to set up a Patreon. So if you've any interest in memberships, I'm probably starting the, the only tier is starting at three pound a month. But we'll see how we get on with that. I'm not sure when to do that. And uh, coffee as well. If you've heard of that, you can do one-off donations and stuff to help me buy products to the to to make this content. So if anyone would be interested in that, please let me know in the comments. And if you think that's a, a, an idea that has any validity, because the thing is. Some of these laptops are really cheap. Like the X201T, which I've got here, was £50, so I'll detail more of that in a bit. But the T480, my P51, so on and so forth, eGPU caddies, all of this sort of stuff. It's um, one of the reasons for the delayed schedule and the slow progress of my channel is saving up money for the devices. So, you know, if you want to send in a device for review, that's an option. We can definitely talk about that. If you and, and any donations can be spent directly on buying the hardware so that I can show you how it works. Um, because I am disabled, I'm not working. So this limit, well, there's huge limits on what I can do really, and that's why my schedule is so slow and delayed. Um, yeah, that's basically everything I wanted to say. So with all that said, um, let's look at my current ThinkPad collection and see some of the features and accessories I use with them as well. So here we are. To start off with the most modern and youngest device I own, we have got the Lenovo ThinkPad T480. There'll be a full review there in the cards. 
Um, so I've just done, read an hour long in-depth review. It's my most recent video. Feel free to check that out. So we've got an i7 8550U. 16 gigs of DDR4, 2666 megahertz. Um, trackpad on it is gorgeous. Although other people, other people don't like it. You can replace it with the, the, the glass trackpad from an X... Uh, an X1 Carbon, I forget which gen, I think it's the 5th or 6th gen, but I can't remember. Fingerprint reader, uh, the keyboard is lush, actually. I really like this keyboard. It's, it's just a very compact device, if you look, it's, look at its form factor, it's very reminiscent of the X1s with a little bit more heft to it, which is good, it's got better cooling. But built-in smart card reader, power delivery, which also supports video, but not Thunderbolt 3. We've got a full Thunderbolt 3, which I use for eGPU, and then the docking connector. On the front panel, we've just got a nice, oh, I'll show you the bezel on that, lovely bezel. And then we've got on the other side, we've got headphone, microphone combo jack, USB 3.1, HDMI, I believe 2, HDMI 2.0. Uh, always on, or potentially always on if you set that in the BIOS. Uh, USB 3.1 again, uh, full gigabit ethernet, SD XC card reader. On the back, there's not much going on except for these classic ThinkPad design language, brushed, brushed metal hinges, and the 9-cell battery. And it's also got, uh, which is 72 watt hours, and included the internal built-in battery. We're looking somewhere in the region of, with some tweaks and power saving settings, up to about 16 hours, including the 3-cell that came with it making up to about 17 18 hours battery life it's gorgeous i love it i haven't got a docking station for it although one does exist the reason i haven't bought the docking station for it yet is this lovely finish on it as well completely replaced the top cover added wireless wan module as well well i remember so it's got 4g lte with a uh, 10 gigabyte a month o2 sim card maxing out around 30 to 50 megabits per second um other than that, it's basically stock. I uh, put a one terabyte NVMe Gen 3 drive in it for now. The Lovo branding just here and the ThinkPad logo there. Um, and yeah, it's probably my favorite device of this form factor. It outperforms the P51. Uh, it, do, it underperforms in comparison to the P51 being slightly, despite it being slightly newer, but it's not, not far off. Like the U-series CPU really can push some pixels and I video edited on it and it seems to have a very similar performance to the P51 uh, at a lower clock speed so that's kind of why I'm saying it's sort of nerfed by comparison being a U-series that is the T480 so I'll be back with the next device so ThinkPad numero dos is the ThinkPad P51 workstation absolute monstrous beast of a laptop so starting with the screen, hello, you can see me there. Uh, 10 point multi-touch, uh, 1080p. It's um, not great um, brightness wise because uh, when outdoors, but for a workstation, you're indoors, you're plugged in, you're editing. It does the job admirably with it in conjunction with its Pantone, Pantone, I forget what it's called. It's a color calibrating tool built in. It's got a German keyboard with uh, non-functional, with damaged so these two work fine but the left click doesn't work very well the trackpad on this is really nice so that's uh, what i often do is i use it sort of like track point with the finger and then click with these or i just use the trackpad for gestures and it's, it's quite large it fits up to four fingers and we get up to four finger gestures full number pad built in a uh, really nice fingerprint reader that's just bang on um keyboard it, it, it's, it's, it's a chick that keyboard it does what it needs to do i need a uk one really uh, but it's got three late three three brightness levels for backlighting so that's kind of everything to tell you you've got an individual scroll button there as well top is in pretty damn good condition there's the fingerprint magnets all around i need to get a magic eraser and just clean all of these up but so you've got the same same lenovo branding thinkpad there then on the left hand side you've got the cpu vent Express card 534 so you can put potentially an NVMe drive in there if you get one of the think mods if they ever release them You've got SDXC, but you can also use that for an eGPU using the EXP B stock It does have the the slot for a smart card reader, but doesn't feature one 
I've never tried to eject it, but I think it's just a placeholder. And then, yeah, SDXC, non bootable XC. And then across the front, we've just got this lovely bezeled layer. Uh, we'll come to the bottom in a minute. We've got, sorry about the scratching noises, uh, headphone, microphone combo jack, USB 3.1, USB 3.1, holding a Bluetooth dongle at the moment because that, the Bluetooth card in it is just, just doesn't work. It's inconsistent, there's driver issues works for a bit and then when you restart it completely disables it we've got mini display port which is actually kind of cool to see it's not thunderbolt or anything and then around the back we've got a gpu vent and a gpu vent there as well um thunderbolt sorry thunderbolt 3 which i use for eGPUs, and you can also carry a ton of other signals hdmi full-size ethernet rectangular power cpu vent USB 3.1, USB 3.1 always on, and then just the CPU fan. Um, again, it's gorgeous design language with these brushed metallic hinges. It's, it's an absolute beast, and I'm running Windows 10 on it. I forgot to mention the, P, the T480, I'm running Windows 11. This is running Windows 10 at the moment on a 500 gig SSD, uh, NVMe. It's also got Pop! OS on a 256 gig SSD, but I have plans for this. I don't want to run Windows 10 uh, after end of support, or, well, technically. So my plan, it's got two NVMe slots and a 2.5 inch drive slot. So in the moment I've got a one terabyte hard drive, 512 gig NVMe Gen 3, 256 gig PCIe drive. I'm going to replace both NVMe drives with... Um, two terabyte NVMe drives, and then the, S the hard drive will be replaced with either a two or four terabyte, just cheap SATA SSD. And it can also max, so it's currently rocking 32 gigs of RAM. It's got four DIMM slots that can take up to 128 gigs. So my plan is to just basically put the 32 gigs from here in the T480, and then slowly but surely over time, when I can afford it, replace each DIMM slot with a 32 gig, taking me up to the full um, 128 gig when I can afford it. It's also got the, it's got a quad core eight thread i7, what is it? 7820HQ workstation processor, so non-socketed, so you can't upgrade it. Uh, it's got a built-in four gig Quadro M2200 uh, workstation graphics card. And then I use it in addition with what's just up there, which I might show you at the end there, which is my Level Legion with an RX 6300 gigabyte. And the idea is to run um, a hypervisor. So I'm not sure exactly what. I might use Fedora Workstation or Proxmox um, or what else? Ba basically just a virtual machine. Um, a, a hypervisor, bare metal hypervisor on it as the main OS, like Fedora Workstation is the current plan. And then pass through the GPU, we use the Intel, it's got Intel 630 graphics, so that the host OS will use that. Then the built in Quadro will be for one virtual machine, and then the eGPU can be used for another virtual machine, but ideally just the eGPU for now. And I've been looking into how to do it. And the idea is that I'm going to run Linux as the host. Then I'm going to have Windows 10, Windows 11, Pop! OS, and um, all as direct pass-through VMs. So the, so the idea would be that I can air gap my Windows 10 install on one or, or two terabytes of one NVMe, but make a RAID array, because I think, as far as I know, this is compatible with, with RAID. So you can put both NVMe's in RAID, and then you've got, like... Um, storage the the four terabyte sata ssd that can be used for the hypervisor or i might even just i don't even need that much space on the second drive but i want eight terabytes 120 gigs of ram and then pass through all the other hardware capabilities at near bare metal speeds for windows 10 windows 11 pop os because I, I really like pop os i want to i want to run a native Linux install on this. I'll see how I get on with Fedora, but it needs to be compatible with the eGPU. So 
that's just a little bit of a sneak preview like that's gonna that's gonna be a few months if not like six months because it takes a lot of time and money to get to those specs but this will be a linux host machine basically that's it in a nutshell and then i'll virtualize windows 10 for music production so all my legacy hardware will work including if you see that mixer just there that runs via express card so i can have um ableton running via this express card adapter and then have a full mixer uh, bare metal performance pass through the express card adapter to the vm and then windows 11 will be a dedicated isolated vm just for video editing possibly might even forego windows 11 and just have um a full linux distro on there or just use the full full tower we'll see how we get on i'm waffling now so we'll move on to the next device that is my p51 Now, moving th further back in time, we're on to third generation uh, Intel hardware. So we've got my partner's, which I gave her for her birthday because I'm such a legend. Got my partner's X230 tablet. I, you can tell it was mine because it's got the sexy inside and the anonymous sticker. Uh, fully reticulated. Um, third gen i7, really nice screen on this. Use it with a stylus, which is currently in one of my other laptops because I borrowed it. Um, check the keyboard, nice tactile feedback, no fingerprint reader, no webcam, even though she's got that on there, but it doesn't need it because I don't think she knows that it doesn't have a webcam. But security conscious is always good. It's um, i7, 16 gigs around, one terabyte uh, SATA SSD, and mobile broadband on the left. We've got CPU fan, USB 3, VGA. Full size display port, which is always nice on a laptop. Shame that, that I'll show you, but that doesn't have it. Uh, another full size USB 3 express card for eGPUs. We've got a wireless kill switch around the back. We've got CPU venting power, nine cell battery, not in great condition. I've been trying to coerce it because it's got Ivy Rain on it. I This was my device, I Ivy Rained it. Um, it's got the docking port connected there, which I haven't mentioned, but the P51 has a docking connector as well, so she needs a new battery for that. We've got the stylo for the stylus. We've got Kensington lock slot. We've got more headphone microphone jack. We've got full-size gigabit. We've got SD card reader, hard drive bay. And then along the front, we've got not much. We've got this little, little wireless antenna bit there. And then, um, yeah, i7, four, two cores, four threads. It's the 30... The third gen i7, I can't remember what it is at the top of my head, so yeah, that's what we've got there. That's my partner's. And then alternate third gen is the non tablet version of the X230, which I have put the palm rest and keyboard from the X220 on. I need to get a new X220 keyboard, mask it, and fix it because the track point buttons don't work and they've actually burned out on the keyboard itself. I've discovered through some testing. Uh, but for now, I'm just using the track point as my input device and then left click, right click or left click, right click. So it's, it's manageable. It's worth it for this gorgeous keyboard. But eventually I need to get a full new working X220 keyboard to replace this. Um, on the left, uh, 1366 by 768 screen, as has the previous one. Um, this is... Um, supposed to be matte finish but it's it's not great it's a nice it's a nice enough screen it looks all right i, I added that myself and improved it so again two usb3 vga mini display port wireless hardware wireless kill switch express card um again the design language there with the lovely brushed metallic finish hinges barrel jack nine cell battery this one lasts eight to twelve hours under linux it's literally like 12 hours plus docking connector currently only got four gigs of ram oh the x230 tablet has 16 uh because i'm experimenting with other laptops but it normally has six, 16 gigs of ram but i've only popped four in it at the moment because i'm borrowing eight for that one and then the x220 has got my 16 gigs in it but long term the x220 i'll talk about that in a minute uh, SD HC card reader, USB 2 always on, full size Ethernet, headphone microphone combo, drive bay, Kensington lock. On the front, it's just got this little bezel from the old design where they used to have SD cards there. 
docking connector, so on and so forth. So that's everything about this laptop. It's a cult classic for a reason. It's a really nice device. I've used it with eGPUs. I've used it with full terabyte hard drives, uh, up to 16 gigs of RAM. I've done the EC mod to allow non-proprietary, basically to bypass the need for a decent battery, although it does have an, a, a proper branded, uh, it's a, from Duracell 2 power sort of battery. The only issue with it is this little thing here, so I'm going to try and get rid of that at some point. Um, keep my energy star logo and then I was gonna, I've was i got a custom Tech Dave print that's going to be in green or black just to put on this and then when I can erase all of this really stuck on sticker without scratching it so I need to figure that out any tips pop them in the comments so that's my X230 and then the beast mode of the third generation um, oh and actually I'll feature this more maybe so for the, both those laptops my partner's got a docking station. I've got a docking station. I did have another one, but it got damaged. Um, we've got the Ultra Base 3 with power on at the front. It's got two vent holes to pass through the speakers. It's got a docking disconnect. It's got a hard software disconnect button. We've got power, additional USB, uh, Ethernet, one, there, one gigabit. Uh, DisplayPort VGA. Separate headphone and mic jacks. You won't believe how often that's been useful to me. Four additional USB ports that function whilst the other ones are functioning. And then you can put a DVD drive in here, but at the moment I've just got a what is it, 500 gig. Yeah, 500 gig Seagate hard drive for additional storage. So this can be used with the X230 tablet, the T, the X230 tablet, the X230, and my X220 which we shall show you in a minute. Once we get to this, we've also got the functions with the X230 and the T430 only, and the X220 actually, but without this USB port being active. We've got the 4337 or 4338 dock, there's the disconnect, there's the power on, there's the lock, there's the actual docking connector. Can work with the T430S as well in that orientation. Um, and then ports wise we've got Kensington lock there, we've got VGA, Ethernet, DVI-D, so no VGA signal there, display port power, headphone, microphone, Ethernet, five USB 2 ports, one USB 3, which I quite often use for an external hard drive or disk drive in a caddy, so I've got a full size 3.5 inch bay that's often used with that. Um, and that works with the X230, the X220, and the T430. Not the X230 tablet, though. It doesn't work with that. And then, this thing is my kind of powerhouse prior to getting my P51. This has got an i7-3840QM. It's got 2133 megahertz, 16 gigs DDR3. Um, I upgraded the processor again in the cards. There's a full playlist. Um, it's got AMD Radeon graphics sticker because I use it with previously with my RX 480 and the EXP B stock section inside. You've got the little stickers and things. This is meant to say Technology Dave, but it actually didn't do a very good translation. We've got no face and various adverty stuff. Normally it has a Japanese keyboard, but um, I've managed to fix this one that I found in the attic. So it's got a fully working standard keyboard. 1600 by 900 gloss finish, but it's actually really, really deep blacks and it's really nice. And there's all my adverts, as I've been told they are. But yeah, there's my stickers with so Ableton and then a ton of anime stuff. I'm going to deck this out with more stickers eventually, but I just wanted something to remind me of my anime favourites. Then on the left, we've got... Uh, this is actually the hard drive bay as well, as known as... I think, is that right? Yeah, so that's the hard drive bay for the main drive. And then you've got display port, mini display port, sorry. Two USB 3, VGA, headphone, microphone, um, CPU vents, power, nine cell battery. It only gets about four hours, although under Linux you get significantly more. Uh, full size Ethernet, USB 2 always on. Kensington lock, USB 3, hardware, Wi Fi, and Bluetooth kill switch. SDHC card reader, Express card, which is great for eGPUs and also NVMe drives, or if when they're eventually available, and my mixer. And then in the Ultra Bay, 
There's nothing in there at the moment, but I've got a hard drive dock for when I eventually put the one terabyte drive out of there back in here. It's currently rocking, um, a needing to desperately be replaced brand new install. Like, it's a really old install of Windows 10. I'm going to wipe it. This is going to be a Linux machine permanently. I think that's the plan. It did have a one terabyte M SATA SSD with Pop OS, but I, with... Yeah, Pop OS, I did a review on that recently. Again, might be in the cards if I've got enough space. But uh, this is going to be a Linux machine. Our aim is to have up to three terabytes of storage, one terabyte SSD, one terabyte hard drive, one terabyte MSATA SSD. And that's how it's going to run. I need to invest in a new battery for it, the little locking connector there. But, um, yeah, it doesn't have the discrete NVIDIA graphics, the MVS 1000M, but... Cooling wise, that's fine for me. Maybe I'll do a motherboard swap eventually, so it's got the integrated uh, NVIDIA DGPU, which I'd quite like it to have. But for now, it's actually pretty damn sweet. But the sort of plan that I had for it was to was to replace the motherboard and then put this motherboard in with a pass through built in, so that you can feed. Oh, it's very complicated, but basically, you can feed the internal display with a HDMI switch that goes in the Ultra Bay port and then you can pass through the eGPU to the internal screen but I'll say no more on that because I don't know if I'm definitely doing that so that is the third gen out of the way I'm going to have a cup of coffee and I'll be back with the next laptop and they just keep getting older so this is a, quite a recent acquisition there will be a full video on this um, in the coming weeks basically a full review of can I use the X220 for everything I need to do everything I need in 2022? So we've got the lovely uh, six, is it the six row, the raised keyboard, the, the classic ThinkPad keyboard. It's got the ThinkLite, it's got a fingerprint reader, which isn't actually that bad. Um, it's got, oh, yeah, just I love this keyboard. It's this one, this, this came in such nice condition, it was only 35 pounds with no hard drive one four gig or one two gig stick of ram and just as is basically so it's fully working didn't have a power supply but like it's basically mint condition if you look at the lid as well it had, had some stickers out to remove but it's just got a few little blemishes it's actually in really good condition for 35 quid no supervisor pass excuse me either so i was ple quite pleased with that uh express card hardware kill switch two usb two VGA, full-size display port. I, again, love that. Seeing the lovely design language again. We've got the barrel jack. This, this gets up to uh, seven hours battery life with a third-party battery. 16 gigs of RAM docking connector. 16 gig DDR3, 13, 33, or 10. Whatever the next rank up, but 1600 megahertz. In the main, oh, we've got Kensington's Unlock, uh, USB 3, SDHC, full-size Full speed gigabit headphone microphone, 500 gig hard drive in there, and then under the palm rest, I've put a one terabyte M SATA with Pop OS dual boot. Well, Pop OS is the main OS, and then i3 window manager also because this keyboard is just made for a keyboard based operating system. It looks nice, feels nice, I really like it, and I will be doing a full in depth review on it moving forwards. Um, Windows, uh, the Windows apparently has overheating issues. I'm finding that this thing does get pretty hot when you're running a modern operating system on it, but so far so good. It's not, it's not throttled, it's not choked out, it just gets warm. So that's my X220. And if you want to see that full review, let me know in the comments anything that you might like to know about it. And then we'll be back with the next device. So another second gen device that in the, in the household, this is now my son's, used to be my partner's, is the, hopefully nothing's on here. Oh, yeah, hold on. Right, just removing his TV stuff from watching there. Um, a very filthy, but much loved, uh, X220T. It's the i7, it's actually Henge. Finger, fingerprint reader, the digitizer got cracked. We bought a new one, webcam as well, but I think it's 720p. We bought a new digitizer and then that got cracked, so I didn't bother fitting it. It's got the the six row keyboard, uh, which is lovely. Um, 
it's obviously fully reticulated you can spin that around for drawing uh, let's start on this side we've got stylus which is probably somewhere in his room Kensington lock headphone microphone uh, Ethernet oops, oops, shaky hands USB 2.0 always on SDHC 480 gig SSD running Windows 10 Pro I believe wireless antennas across the front um, not that really, it's probably too for real. Express card, wireless kill switch, USB 2, USB 2, VGA, full size display port, nice. Um, barrel jack, 9 cell battery, but it's like about one hour battery life, if that. Um, and yeah, he's probably needs it cleaning, I think. <laughs> That's probably my responsibility as the ThinkPad enthusiast. But it's a lovely device, does what it needs to do. And uh, he's very pleased with it and gets a lot of life out of it. On to the next laptop. So an extremely recent addition, aka yesterday, is the X201 tablet. Now, this is £50, but look how dinky it is. Look at, look at the tiny trackpad. It's tiny. You can just about fit two fingers on there. Maybe three, but would you? there's no three-finger gestures, so who knows. Dedicated left and right click. Got nice clicky track point buttons, a lovely track point, uh, fingerprint reader, which as you can see, I haven't programmed to start the laptop. It's an, I want to turn that function off so that it doesn't do that, so it's not ambiently draining the battery. It's got a lockable on switch here, uh, face buttons, all of which, uh, this is running Windows 11, uh, which is kind of a controversial decision on such an old ThinkPad, but it's first gen i7L640, I think it is. Um, if I've got, I think that's right, but if I got it wrong, I'll put it there. Um, yeah, it's got Wacom pen drivers for the digitizer, which is a bit, it's just it's actually really gorgeous, 1280 by 800, I think it's 16 by 10 aspect ratio. It's, this bezel is slightly wider, which I've always found odd, and it's got that raised bit for the wireless antennas as well. So it's a cool feature where that locking mechanism can be used in both orientations so you kind of do that and then it doesn't unlock out of tablet mode which is actually pretty sick um it's got an extended nine cell battery that lasts about two hours so i'm probably going to replace that with one that lasts four hours at least but i was very pleased to, to see that it works i'm going to cover up my product key um, but the actual battery connector is damaged that this bit you can undo it You just have to stick something in there to push it. Uh, it's currently got 8 gigs of 1060 uh, 1600 megahertz or 1333 megahertz RAM Docking connector which works with the ultra base 2 which I'll show you in a minute because that's also compatible with my Core 2 duo machine, which is the X200. So we've got Whatever that is USB port. We've got this. I think this is, must be the Kensington lock. We've got the silo and stylus there. Um, it was missing the hard drive cover, so what I've done is just kind of MacGyvered in a uh, 60 gig SSD with some paper and some cellar tape. For now, it's got modem which you can use to make phone calls, which is kind of cool. Uh, headphone and microphone, USB 2 again. Uh, full size SD card slot, which I believe is SDHC. You've got the locking mechanism. We've got Express Card, so we can use this with these GPUs. Hardware, Wi-Fi, kill switch. Uh, no Bluetooth, it would appear, but that might be the drivers missing. It does have a Bluetooth icon, but whether it has the right card for it. Gigabit Ethernet, VGA, power connector on the left-hand side with Kensington lock there. CPU fan. Um, and actually, again, this is in surprisingly good condition. It's £50, which is probably a bit overpriced, but... Kind of a bargain, it's got a few scuffs, but relatively good condition. I was pleased with it for 50, and, and yeah, so running Windows 11 on it seems to work. I know all the face buttons and everything, but I'm probably going to dual boot it with um, a lightweight Linux distro for drawing, so I can extend my battery life um, and things like that. And the idea that I've got for that is to run the Linux distro off the SD card slot because it is bootable. It appears as a boot option, you can directly boot off it, so I'm going to have like swappable distros via the SD card slot, which is actually a pretty cool feature, you can't deny that's cool, I mean, you can, but it, it runs better than a mechanical drive, but not as well as an SSD, obviously, but it, 
I've done it before with the X200, which I'll show you now. Actually, while I'm here, let me grab the ultra base as well. So, this is compatible with the X201T and the X201 and the X200 here. So this has got a 60 gig SSD in the main drive bay. Again, bootable SD card slot, locking mechanism. No trackpad, which I like. I like that there's no trackpad. It's got track point, uh, keyboard's gorgeous. Screen 1200 by 800 again. 12, 1280 by 800, but not, but like 16 by nine aspect ratio. Uh, fingerprint reader, which does work, but I just not got it configured at the moment. Um, uh, it's running Pop! OS with the custom distro setup just for, well, not custom, but I, I've set it up for writing, basically. Can use a lot. Main drive bay, modem also, microphone, headphone, USB. We've done the front, we've got the SD card slot, bootable again. Express card, Wi-Fi, kill switch, USB, USB, gigabit, VGA, power. I've got two six cells for it, um, both of which have trouble booting. I think the BIOS battery is not in good condition. We've got the docking connector visible there as well. It's got a 3G modem built in, but I don't use it on Linux because uh, 3G is, is borderline useless other than for sending texts. But I have set it up so it can do that. Um, what else? Oh, it has some boot issues. I don't know whether it's the real-time clock battery, but um, basically, if you try and cold boot it, let's see if it does it now. If you cold boot, it had a long time issue of just freezing there. And... Would you believe it? It's not messed up. Well, that has defeated the point I made, but yeah, it's running Pop! OS, basically. It's, it's basically a word processor, Core 2 Duo, so it's a Centrino V Pro. Core 2 Duo P8600 dual, dual cores, no, no hyper-threading. Um, 6 gig SSD, it's got 4 gigs of DDR3 at the moment, or it can take up to 8. I haven't stably been able to get it to use 8, because I haven't got the right... RAM sticks for that to work, but you need 1333 or PCR 8500. Um, and it's exclusively used for writing because of that gorgeous keyboard, and it's, it's, it's not much good for anything else, meaning that it kind of gives you uh, it de incentivizes distractions. So, other than, other than that, that's I missed one out, but I'm trying to put that earlier in the video. It's my son's X220T, but. It's got the docking connector, this software disconnect button, uh, second battery charger, cool as heck. It's got uh, three USBs, one is occupied by my wireless mouse and keyboard over there. Uh, powered barrel jack, VGA, display port, which does carry audio, but only on the X201T, not the X200. Microphone, headphone, and Ethernet. And then extra USB port here, and then here, I don't think it will come out. It's wedged in there good and proper, but I've got an external hard drive, well, an Ultra Bay hard drive with Windows XP and Windows 7 Pro, both for the X200, uh, that can be booted off either machine because you can set the, uh, or just use for extra storage. Uh, you can also put a DVD or CD drive in there. It's got this nice feature which is like, so you can press it, but then it locks that out so you can't turn it on. So you can leave it docked, and then you just kind of lock that out, which is kind of a cool feature. Um, yeah, that's basically it. So that's the full collection. Thank you for watching. Um, please like, subscribe, share. Thank you so much for all the support you've been giving me with the loads of comments, likes. Subscribers coming in almost every day. Um, I hope that you're enjoying the content, and if you are, please let me know in the comments and give me ideas for what I could do for you in the future, because obviously we're part of a community. ThinkPad community is awesome, if not odd, and I love that about it. And I would very much like to know what you think of the channel and what I could do moving forward so that I can provide something of value. So thank you for watching. I've been Tech Dave. Peace.